Can you just do this feature? No, no, no. This no. is literally like, what is this, 15? Number 15 or something? <laughs> so, uh, I'm, there's too many good cars. There's just so many yeah. good cars here. And um, so Sasha has this crazy what's left of a 350Z. Little, little pieces cut out here and there, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. So we're, we're going to do this. We have to do this quick because we're running out of light. We got Tyler on the video with his gimbal knees. Yep. And, and then we got uh, Lewis here <laughs> oh, no. with his old man emu suspension knees. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, they... Uh, you got to stretch in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, Lewis is doing stills. And I'm going to do the interview because this thing is just so cool. There's just so many questions. See, the thing is, I have the same car, but it's not even the same car anymore at all. <laughs> right? Mine is a crappy drift car. This is a spaceship? Yeah, but dude, this started out as an old Grand Am race car. Oh. From California. This was one of those old Fontana Nissan GS race cars. No way. Yep. That is so cool. Built by Jackson Stewart, and that guy is the man. So I inherited this car as a race car, and then we turned it into the spaceship at that point. Jeez. So it's okay. a lot of history. Like these suspension arms Jackson Stewart made from Unitech. It's crazy that there's a hole here yeah, dude, we were the swapping clearance. springs through here, so we just drop the damper and pull the spring out and pop a new spring in like that. It's awesome. You're running KWs. Yeah, they're four ways. All right, so what is this powered by? Yeah, you know Jim Wolf? Uh-huh. Jim Wolf Technology? Yeah. So we've been working with them for a number of years. It's a 4.2 liter, 15 to 1 compression, naturally aspirated. We've got ITBs we made. Uh, it's like big boy headers. So it makes about 530 at the wheels. Naturally aspirated. So it's a VQ42 then? Yeah, it's a 3.7 with a, with a stroker basically to 4.2. Okay, but it's a VQ32, but it's not even HR anymore or anything like that. Because it's, a, it's, it's got HR heads, yeah. Right, so it's, it's HR, heads. HR, but all of it is standalone. What, what fuel are you running on? Uh, it's just regular pump gas with uh, additive. Really? Yeah, the, the race gas additive mix. And you can make that much power? Yeah, yeah, dude, that stuff's pretty good, man. No one believes me when I tell them, but it's more convenient than buying drums of race fuel. <laughs> so that's what we use. What is uh, what does it rev out to? I rev it to 82, 83. I was told not to go above 82. We go to 84 sometimes. Huh. When you feel it, when you like when feel, really, you just need you a little that, bit more. Ah, sound. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. No, it's really cool, man. Uh, having the sounds when we do all this EV stuff, having an engine that still screams is really, yeah. really nice. Yeah. So then why why is it that more people don't build time attack z cars what what what's they're pretty heavy to start with got it and they're very front heavy which is not ideal for putting power down and you've really done so much to lighten this too yeah but the more you lighten the car the more front heavy it tends to get got it right because it's easy just to take weight off the back just to, uh, replacing the hatch with like a carbon one or a fiberglass one you lose so much weight off the back that's right and then it's like, well, then what are you going to take exactly. off the front? So we just did this whole new front end. So we finally got some weight off the front, but it's been a struggle. Adding a battery to the back helped, but it went up. We added weight, so at least the balance is better. But we got it. Weight. So, so then the, the front end, what's left of it, I guess, this is all carbon. Yeah, so you can see, you know, the factory Z usually has like a headlight bucket structure and all that stuff. Yep. So because this carbon structure is so strong, we can have it all hollow there, but it's still very strong. No way. So you don't actually need to have that many metal don't need supports all that support or anymore because the carbon and the way it bolts together with this flange here, it's like, it's like beefy. It's cool because the core support is still it's stock. It's still there. We just had a little bracket to support it and behind here. But. Oh. And then, but this is all functional too. This is all aero functional. Totally. Yeah. Did, the the underwing is all really shaped underneath, underneath here. You know, there's some strakes as well that go down to the ground to kind of help seal. Why, why did you go with this motor setup versus going with, with a, an LS? A, no, well, that or a force induction VQ or VR. Um, my, my previous business was tuning engine, like, engines on a dyno. Like, that's what I did every day. And you tune so many turbo cars, you know, you get tired of them. And that's it response and the sound like of an NA engine. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice challenge, right? To make the most power possible NA, it's like awesome. And then we kind of hit the ceiling at 500 wheel. So then when we started getting into the mountain pass with electric cars and we're like, you know what, let's just make the Z hybrid so we can get the extra power we want and we can combine the EV stuff we've done with this car. And then so this has a hybrid system too? Yes. Yeah, so there's a Formula E motor between 
the uh, engine and the transmission in, in the bell housing. In the bell housing? Yeah, you can't see it. It's inside the bell housing. So it doesn't actually have a clutch. So for me to start driving, the motor has to both be the starter and start the engine and turn the wheels at the same time. So it's kind of a pain in the ass through the paddock. The thing just goes... Wait a minute. So if it doesn't have a clutch, how do you shift then? It's paddle shift. Sequential gearbox. Okay. It has to start on electric. Electric motor has to start it's, it. it's like. It's like a direct drive. It's direct drive. It's like the starter is not just starting the engine, it's turning the whole car and moving the whole car all at once. And then once it gets above a certain RPM, the engine turns the fuel and ignition on, and it fires and it, it can be driven like a normal car at that point. I was just joking about it being a spaceship, but it actually is a spaceship. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It has four wheel steering as well. What? Yeah. So, so okay, okay, let me take a guess. Is this the <laughs> ground? Yeah, thing. this is a high voltage isolation high voltage. module, so you know if it's flashing, you know it's dangerous to touch. Yeah. I know this because I've been shooting a lot of electric, uh, very you cool. know, yes. whatever, Gymkhana yes. or a Von Gittin Jr.'s yep. Mach-E, you know? Yep. So I know if it's red, no, do not touch this, the car. Well, you know, we don't have a standard yet. I guess we should understand that. And, and in this case, we have green is safe. Red means it's still safe, but on. And flashing red and yellow means it's not safe. Got it. Okay. So I need to understand. We need to like build a standard for that so yeah. everyone kind of does the same lights. Right, right, right. But yeah, right. totally, dude. Okay. All right. You just opened up a whole new can of worms in terms of questions. Yeah. You remember how I told you that like front engine is bad yeah. for putting a bunch of power down? Well, usually having some more toe in helps put power down, but it makes the car understeer a lot in the middle of the corner. So the concept was like, can we use those actuators? You see them coming on Ferraris now, Porsches have them, this rear steer stuff. So I said... You know, I bet we could buy an actuator and reverse engineer it and then fit it in the Z. So we did that like four weeks ago or so. And it's got a bunch of stuff in the ECU, so it does it on steering angle and brake pressure and corner phase and knobs on the, on the steering wheel, whatever you want, to kind of independently move the rear wheels however you want. And we're still playing with it and learning what, what it should even do. But is it because, like, this amount of movement, is it more of like a, um, a alignment? fix like you're saying you know when you're going really uh wh when you're putting the power down you want it to be toe in and you, when, you, when it's in the middle of the corner maybe you want it to be zeroed out or whatever is it exactly. something where it's alignment fix or is it actually helping you steer around a corner uh it's moving all the time while we're driving but it's not like a street car where you see them going around and you, the, it's moving like one or two millimeters Got because it. any more than that and the car just spins out Right, so like because it's just fine, fine tuning stuff. When you're when you're driving like older cars like Nissans that had high kiss, uh -huh. it kind of gives you an uneasy feeling in that it feels like it's drifting or like coming yes. out, the rear yes. end's coming out, yes. but it's not. Right. D is it like this for this? If you or? go too far, totally. Like okay. when I first started tuning into the track two weeks ago, if you just turn, it just gets into a slide. Got it. Because I was pushing my luck on old tires, right? So it's all this learning, but the point is, it's possible in theory to make the car to be able to never understeer and you just can always go back to the pits and say, you know, at this point it understood a bit, let's just fix that right now. And it's like that easy. So that's the, that's the concept. This is the craziest 350 It has Z a I've lot of electronics seen. in it, for sure. It's electronically- I, mean, I, I love the fact that you're using technology to go faster. Because if you just put a big turbo motor in it, I mean, it, I, maybe that's the easy way out or whatever, but you obviously did really well this weekend too, right? You, you got second place? Second, yeah. Overall. And it was close too. I was expecting it to be a lot faster, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I just feel like I couldn't get the tires to work, man, because I'm benchmarking this car to like a, an IMSA GDD car. That's kind of my expectation of this. And at most sport, we're pretty close. We're about a second off before the front end, all, before this new iteration of the build. We were about a second off a GDD car. So to come here and be three or four seconds off of a GDD car on such a slow track is, uh, is kind of perplexing. And the data is, we have a model that we built in Assetto Corsa. So we have this exact car built in Assetto Corsa and matched the data perfectly to real life at most sport. So it's totally calibrated to the downforce and the power and this and that. And it showed that this car would do a 49 here pretty easily. So to come here and do a 51, I was like, confused by that could it have been the heat it was pretty hot yeah the heat for sure part of it you need to have a rubber also, the, track the track is probably dirty too from mm -hmm. all of us street drift tire. drift <laughs> weirdos there's still yeah. a lot of street tire rubber there so yeah. who knows how that works with like these slicks yeah but i don't want to make all these excuses you know i think we have all this new arrow on the car you know a lot of stuff needs to be worked through C can we take a look at the inside can you open that door on this side i'm just i'm beside myself there's just 
so much going on. So then tell me about the electric system. Where is the battery? Yeah, yeah, so the battery's right under this firewall here. It's actually a BMW i8 hybrid off the shelf battery that we've taken apart and reconstructed to fit in like as a, as a cube kind of under here. And then those cables come up into this power distribution box here. And that's kind of like the main big switch, you know, with Juan Gittin's car, I'm sure you've seen how that works. So basically if the system detects a fault, you turn the car off, then there's switches in here so the high voltage doesn't go to all the other components. Got it. Then when, then when it turns on, the voltage goes through those two big orange cables into the inverter down there and the DC-DC converter. And that basically is what goes feeds through to the motor with those three cables. And that basically takes the, the voltage from the battery and converts it to the voltage, the three phase voltage you need to spin that motor. Um, you are a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Oh, thanks, man. I, I appreciate <laughs> it. This is just so cool. So, um, this is this is the thing. This is why when a lot of people kind of like to talk trash about new technology and especially electric, like this is a very good um, case study of it helping what's existing technology-wise to make it cooler and better. And so, how much power does this actually add? Last year, most of us were using 150 horsepower. This weekend we we're only using 40 horsepower because that battery, we we were using the OEM wires and they were like too thin. So at 150 horsepower, we melted one of them. So this weekend we're like, we're just gonna run it really gently. Um, and we're working on our own custom high voltage. So we've designed our own high voltage battery that we're gonna test out. That's uh, that's next. We've already made the, the first module. So we're gonna test it and then, yeah. That thing on top there that says bright loop on it. Yeah. That's a DC-DC converter. And that is the same unit exactly that you'll find in a modern uh, Red Bull Formula One car. So it's kind wow. of mega. I spent too much money on it, but it was one of those crown jewel type things. You just gotta... So does this mean you have to charge it before every run? No, so the way that this system works, basically, the, the system is called KERS because it, it, it does recover energy. So whenever you're braking, it's recovering energy. Cornering, I can adjust on the dial how much, so it also affects the balance of the car. And then also when you're at partial throttle, you know, like a gasoline engine is very inefficient when it's like at 5% throttle. So in those cases, the, the ECU is tuned, it has a, a torque request system. So I'm not commanding a throttle position, I'm commanding a torque. So what I'm trying to say is the engine makes more power and then the motor absorbs it and charges the battery. I see. And then only when I get to the maximum the engine can produce, then I put the accelerator a little bit more and I get the extra power from the motor. Got it. But would it make sense maybe later on to develop a system where you charge it and it's like has full power before you go out? Totally. I mean, usually the idea is to do like on your cool down lap, you, you top it back up. Got it. But okay. yes, yeah, so 100%, we have another plug on the back there that we can put a charger into, an external charger and top it up. Incredible. So, so cool. And why is it that you wanted to use the Z chassis? Well, I, I don't know if you- Dude, kind of I had an S14 saying. race car uh -huh. in 2006. 2007, I won a championship in Canada, like a regional semi-pro championship racing my Z, or my, my 240. And then my next step was to try to go to Grand Am. And then there was this UZ, this car for sale for like 30 grand with a roadster, with a spare engine, with a spare gearbox, and like a bunch of CCW wheels. So like, I bought that car because it was a fantastic deal. Then I went Grand Am racing with an open trailer, showing up late with a bunch of friends and everyone else has got a stackers and all this stuff. And very quickly realized that I can't afford to do this. And then the Z kind of turned into an endurance racing car, then a time attack car. And so that's kind of how God. I've always been a Nissan guy since, you know, since I the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it was really just because that was a, the next pr step for racing to, and this car was for sale for cheap. Right. Because this wasn't, a street car uh you didn't buy it i didn't buy it as a street car like right. this cage was done by unit by jackson's guys at unitech but other than the cage and even we've added to the cage and changed the cage nothing is the same all the wiring harnesses we've remade of course the engine nothing's the same anymore but it still has that kind of spirit of that car so that's kind of cool I'm so surprised I haven't seen this before because this is just like everything. You might have seen it, man. I, it was, I, it was it, green and it was on Super Street a long time ago and then it was red before that. So it's changed colors a couple of times. It's just so cool to me that you've developed, because this would only work with a hybrid without a clutch. Yeah, you, can, right? you have to start. Yeah, yeah exactly. you have to. I mean, what this reminds me of, it's, it's like those sprint cars, those 
winged sprint cars yeah, 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 where it's yeah. like direct drive you have to be rolling right then you can get it into gear that's right you know or you have to get pushed by something that's right yeah and th this is what it reminds me of so the electric motor turns the motor starts the motor the, yeah well the, it's a, it's the electric motor start it's the engine spinning yeah, the whole time yeah. but the ignition that fuels off until yeah. you get an rpm enough and then it lights oh, up yeah that is the coolest thing i just there's just so much cool going on with that so then what else is carbon on this thing uh pretty well everything's carbon the doors are carbon the trunks like like you know commercially available carbon the the front fenders and bumper are like proper you know vacuum infused carbon stuff this, this whole is the same diffuser, diffuser. as will civic oh. i just had will pop another one out of the mold for me and then the flat floor is all carbon um will made those as well for me in exchange for tuning his car and uh yeah most of it's carbon yeah incredible and then the you, you fill up from back here but that's just because from the grand am days oh i don't need the quick got it, stuff. got it it's, it's a little bit of weight i don't need but it's, it's so cool. cool you can't yeah. get rid of that right <sighs> Jeez, i love it thanks man dude thank you so much for showing us this oh thanks for like, taking a look at it i really appreciate that just I'm, I'm just I'll so... I'll give you a little demo of kind of some of the things I look at on the screen here okay. before, we, before cool. we go away. So we have infrared tire temperature sensors. So while I'm driving, I can kind of like um, look at the tire temperatures and see the inside, middle, and outside while I'm ripping, kind of like a video game for fun. It's a, it is a video game, <laughs> kind yeah. of like a video game. Yeah, yeah. Are so you then, kidding me? So then here I have all the settings. So I, I've only got two knobs, right? So I've got to put on the menu to be able to switch the other settings, ABS, up and down and the, the hybrid map and this and that. And then the knobs do the regen and the rear steering maps. All right, before we were rudely interrupted with, by the card being full. Um, um, okay, so this is the rear steer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here display. we can see kind of what I'm driving. I can make sure it's tracking what I want. Uh -huh. But in, we're in, when we're in the pits, I just have it set up with the brake pedal. So when I press the brake pedal here, Yo. the wheels are turning. And if you look at the back, you can see them turning as well. Wait. It's like visibly a lot. Yeah, that's five millimeters from, from one mil out to four mil in on each side. So because you want it to be straight when you're braking. Well, this is, this, is, this is basically just like a pit check. So we make it move oh, a lot okay, just when the it. pits to make sure it's working. Oh. But when it's on the track, it's doing all kinds of different stuff. But in the brakes, I usually do have some toe in and all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. I'm, what That's do you, pretty epic. What do you yeah. do for work? I own Mountain Pass Performance, so we make parts for Model 3s, Model Ys, and I used to run on Point Dyno, so we're, we're also the Canadian distributor for Motec Electronics. So I see. The focus is really on electronics here. Got it. All right. So yeah, all this stuff, this whole system was all written in, in, uh, in Motec, and, and it's all the programming stuff was kind of my passion project over the last few years. Right. So you really, you really are practicing what you preach. You, this is like... <laughs> this is like your love and this is this, this is everything I know basically uh, put into one car yeah. oh my god I and love it so much it's kind of been much. the state of my knowledge since I kind of since I got it you know yeah this was as fast as I know how to go and we're just learning and going further Jeez. yeah it's gonna time attack you know just when you think you've seen it all like I <laughs> I feel like I feature so many time attack cars and I yeah. enjoy the development of technology and I just love the sport in general, you know? Yeah, just just so cool. There's just so much coolness going Dude, on. Dude, this car is like, uh, every time I do a new step, it's more and more like a video game. Yeah. Right, you right. drive it now and it's just like the paddle shift, the ABS on the brakes, this and that, and all the stuff on the screen and the knobs, just like, is it even real life? Yeah, but it's still fun to drive, oh, right? It's crazy, I mean, dude. even though it Trust is. Me, I was I was fully sideways going over the hill today because I was trying to find those seconds I told you that I was looking for. Yeah. So I was pushing too hard and yeah, it's, it can get pretty spicy. The electronics don't make it totally foolproof by any means. So cool. I love it so much. Thanks, man. Um, Thanks for taking a look. Yeah, Sasha, this is just, <laughs> this is so cool. Like, I love this. This is the kind of car that blows me away. Like just when you think you've seen it all, you know, like this is, yeah, this is super cool. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, man. Oh,